It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Today, compliance expertise on the board. Yesterday, we talked about the need for a board compliance committee, and I alluded to the need for compliance expertise on the board. And today, I want to take a deeper dive into this. Almost every board has a former chief financial officer, former head of internal audit, or person familiar with, or excuse me, a person with a similar background. And often, these people will head the audit committee as members of a board of directors. Such a background not only fulfills New York Stock Exchange requirement and SEC requirements, but it brings a level of sophistication and training and subject matter expertise that can help all companies with their financial reporting and other finance-based issues. So extrapolating from there, I think it is incumbent that companies now put a compliance subject matter expert at the board level. An arm of the U.S. government has recognized the need for such expertise at the board level. In 2015, the Office of Inspector General called for greater compliance expertise at the board level. The OIG said that the board can raise its level of substantive expertise with respect to regulatory and compliance issues by adding a compliance member to the board. The presence of such a compliance professional with subject matter expertise on the board sends a strong message up and down the company about the organization's commitment to compliance, but it also provides a valuable resource to other board members and helps the board fulfill better its oversight obligations. Think back to the today one when we talked about the legal obligations as set forth under Caremark and Stone and Ritter. Courts are increasingly looking at the expertise available, which allows a board to fulfill its obligations. Or indeed, think about the discharge of prudent discharge of obligations. Can you have that if you don't have subject matter expertise? Mike Volkoff noted compliance counsel and commentator, has looked at it from both a practical and business perspective and has stated, I've witnessed firsthand that companies that have a board member with compliance expertise usually have a more aggressive and effective compliance program. In this situation, a chief compliance officer has to answer to the board for the company's compliance program while receiving the resources and support to accomplish compliance tasks. The Society of Corporate Compliance and Ethics Chief Executive Officer Roy Snell sees it through the prism of the compliance professional and has asked or has said, if you ask most companies if they have compliance expertise on the board, most would say yes. When asked who the compliance expert is, they typically point to a lawyer, auditor, risk manager, or ethicist. None of these professions are automatically compliance experts. All lawyers have different specialities. Snell goes on to state that what regulators want to see is specific compliance expertise at the board level and noted the government is looking not for generic compliance expertise. They are looking for compliance program management expertise. Perhaps the strongest push towards this has been through the Department of Justice and their compliance counsel, Wei Chin. She has continually talked about the need for companies to operationalize their compliance programs. She intones that businesses must work literally to burn compliance into the fabric and DNA of their organization. Having a board member with specific compliance expertise, heading a board compliance committee can lead to a level of oversight and commitment to achieving that goal. It will not be long before the Department of Justice and Securities and Exchange Commission begin to require this step in a FCPA enforcement resolution. This means that when your company is evaluated by Chin under the factors set out in prong three of the FCPA pilot program announced in April 2015, in which she retrospectively looks back to determine if your company had a best practices compliance program in place at the time of violation, 
you will need to not only have the structure of the board level compliance committee, which I talked about in day three, but also a specific subject matter expert on the board as well. If you think about the specific subject matter expertise required in an audit committee, I think that uh, you will quickly see the same can and should be applied to the compliance committee. For instance, the New York Stock Exchange and other major security exchanges require that each member of the audit committee be able to read and understand fundamental financial statements or must liter- become financially literate within a reasonable time after having been approved to the audit committee. At least one member of the audit committee should qualify as an audit committee financial expert within the meaning of SEC rules. The financial expertise requirement is generally fulfilled by a committee member with a background in finance or accounting that permits the board to conclude in good faith that the director is capable of understanding the most complex issues of accounting and finance that are likely to be encountered in the course of a company's business. The New York Stock Exchange permits a board to presume that a person who is an audit committee financial expert within the meaning of the SEC's rules has the requisite accounting or related financial management expertise to satisfy New York Stock Exchange listing standards. I would submit to you that is the standard that is now required for a compliance committee or compliance expertise on the board. So where do you find such a person? Clearly, if you have a person who's been a chief compliance officer, perhaps even a blogger or commentator in the compliance space, But certainly a chief compliance officer, someone who's been in the compliance profession, not simply done investigations, but in the indeed compliance profession where you have designed, created, implemented, and enhanced effective compliance programs within a corporation. This does not mean you have to be in-house, but it certainly from the in-house perspective would lend itself to compliance expertise on the board, but it can be someone from the outside counsel perspective who has done this. They could have done this in the context of an FCPA enforcement action. They could have done it in the context of other significant events. Nevertheless, having someone who has done this leads to having the ability to understand what a best practices compliance program is, and more importantly, the information that is reported to him or her on the board level. But it also, as noted at the start of this podcast, sets a tone. And when you have that kind of compliance expertise on the board, that is communicated down through the chief compliance officer into the business unit. So this can be a very powerful tool. It can be a very powerful tool downward from the board into the business. It can be a very powerful tool upward from the business up and to the board, which allows the board to fill its obligations in the oversight of management. It also gives someone the chief compliance officer can not only ally with, but speak to as a compliance professional. So what are the three key takeaways? Number one, the board must have compliance expertise. I would advocate that compliance expertise be within the compliance committee. Certainly the standards required under the audit committee would apply to a compliance committee as well. Number two, government regulators and shareholder groups have both called for greater compliance expertise at the board. I think the thoughts and writings of Wei Chin, both in public remarks she has made, but also in prong number three on the FCPA pilot program, clearly point to the direction the Department of Justice is thinking about having such compliance expertise at the board. Number three. Compliance expertise at the board works both up and down the corporation so that the downward movement is the tone set by the board communicated through the company and upward is from the chief compliance officer and the compliance function up to the board. Thank you for listening to this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program where we're going to take a look at the role of the board of directors in a best practices compliance program. This production of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a special production of the Compliance Podcast Network. I hope you will join me again tomorrow.
This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.